So we are going to run through the very preliminary steps to making a listing contract. Um, this is the part where we gather information from the clients. So I'm going to show you where that comes from and how to get to it. So when we have a client um, a listing contract or a buying contract, um, we're going to start by sending them to this website. This is our main website. I've got all this information over on this page just so you can jot that down if you need to. So it's www.debkentrealtor.com and you'll notice on here that there are various tabs across the top. This buyers tab uh, takes us to a questionnaire that we aren't going to be using right now. I'm just going to show you, show you that we do have a couple of different ones for gathering information for uh, different sorts of clients. This is the main one we're concerned with right now. We hit that sellers tab and this is where sellers will go to provide us with information so that we can do a listing contract for them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fill this out as though I were a seller and you know just kind of so you can see what it's like from their side and you can feel free to log in to debtcantrealtor.com and navigate to the sellers tab and um, have a look at this yourself play around with it if you want. So first I want to know who they're working with because you know we, we direct all of our agents clients to the same website um, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna work with Deb because why not I'm gonna say that um, this is where we want their name I'm gonna put my email address it asks for a phone number You know, and we need this information. Obviously, we want their contact info. We want to know how their name appears on the deed, etc. Um, I'm going to say I'm the only person on the deed, and we we want to know how clients want to communicate. What usually ends up happening, honestly, um, you know, the fact is that some people prefer to talk on the phone, and others don't want you to ever call them. Nine times out of ten, we get a, a, a listing questionnaire back, and actually all the boxes are checked, which is, that's fine. Um, okay, so we're asking for their address. I'll try to do this as quickly as possible. Country, that's, you know, just FYI, we can only do this actually in Indiana, in our region, but... Um, don't be alarmed, we're not actually selling our home, but you know, we want to know how much they want for it. Hopefully they have consulted with their realtor to arrive at a figure. Sometimes uh, a seller will leave that blank and then you know that's a conversation you have to go and then have with them. You want their information for um, what to do to gain access to the home. Take your muddy shoes off. Um, you know, just they'll provide any information there if they have pets in the house. Hopefully, if they have an alarm, they want to give you the um, information for that. We, we ask them ideally, when would you like to go on the market? You know, and that gives us an idea what sort of timeline we're working with um, in terms of our stagers and, and, and stuff like that. Um, we're, we're asking them other questions that don't necessarily seem to make a lot of sense, but they, they do come into play when you make the actual listing contract. So the more information they provide, the better. Um, we want to know if they bought the house at a tax sale or if they got it in a foreclosure. If they did, then that kind of, you know, for one thing, there's a place on the listing contract to put that information. But for another thing, it signals us as agents that when we come to the point where we're, we're ordering title work and we're dealing with a title company, we, we know that if they bought the home at a tax sale or a sheriff's sale, that there may be some some challenges related to getting clear title. So um, we want to know if they're up to date on their payments. If they're, you know, if they're behind, if they're about ready to go into foreclosure, you know, if it's a short sale or something. Sometimes people don't necessarily want to volunteer that information up front, but we do need to know again so that we can be assured that they're able to sell the home and that they're able to provide a clear title. We're asking if the home requires any sort of um, financial, spe special financing. There are some people who, you know, maybe they bought their house through a program of some sort that requires 
you know, certain income restrictions on the buyer or something like that. Um, in this case, I'm going to say no, there, there are none. Um, in order to fill out our lead-based paint disclosure, which is something that we're required to do for every home built before 1978, um, we go ahead and get that information from the, from the seller at this point also. So um, in our case, I'm not aware that there's any lead-based paint, but our home was built before 1978. And this, in the market that we typically sell in, this is what you're most, like, most likely going to have is homes built before 1978. Nine times out of ten, the seller is not aware of lead-based paint. Um, and, and then if they are, they can also say that they have some documentation. And this is all stuff that, um, as I said, we're going to use later when we get to the actual lead-based paint document. We want to know what the seller is including in the sale. And I've put um, a list here of like the standard things that people include. Um, they can say if they're going to include all the window treatments, if they want only the window blinds, but the drapes are going to go with them or whatever. Um, is there anything they'd like to exclude from the sale? Well, I don't know about you, but I'd like to exclude my donkeys. You can, we're asking them what utility companies they use because that's another thing that's going to come up on a listing contract. And it's also a question that other agents are going to ask you when they're calling to inquire about your listing. Same with average cost for utilities. Um, this actually doesn't really come up on your listing contract, but it is, it's information that you want to have, again, for when another agent has a buyer who's interested. They're going to call you and say, hey, how much are, are the utilities a month? And it's, it's good to have that information. What do you owe on the home? So this we are going to use when we prepare the net sheet, and I'm going to do a different uh, training video for that. And this will help us uh, be able to help the, the buyer figure out how much it's going to cost them to sell the home and then what their proceeds are going to look like at the end of it. I've added a new field for those of you who have been uh, using this for a while. I'm actually asking the, more, the, the interest rate on your mortgage because that also comes into play with the, the net sheet. Some people may not know it. If they if they leave that out, then um, you know typically I just default it to five and go from there. But um, when they get their loan pay off based on the date of their closing, there is going to be like a calculation of daily mortgage interest due that's going to come out of their proceeds, and that will help our our net sheet program calculate that. Um, we want to know the name of your mortgage company. I'm putting Chase in here because it's short and easy to type. I don't actually have a mortgage at Chase and I'm making up account numbers. I'm going to say we don't have a second mortgage. If we had an HOA company, we would put the name of the HOA company, the contract, and the contact info for the person there, and we would specify how much we owe for the dues um, and whether how often we pay it monthly or yearly. And that also, these are things that you're going to want to know ahead of time. Again, if you get a listing with an HOA, then you have to provide information about the dues and also what is covered in the dues, which the, you know they have a place for that here. So if it's snow removal or if they're you know doing maintenance or if there's a swimming pool involved or something like that, then you you put that there so you can include that in your listing. And the the reason that you want the contact info for the HOA is also when you get an offer on the house, you need to know who to contact to be able to get a hold of the covenants and restrictions because you're going to be required to provide that to the buyer's agent. Now the rest of what's on here basically is information that you can use again to provide to other agents. You can put it, um, it, it helps you write your listing description. So we're asking for a list of upgrades. Um, so we actually have, you know, we, we We've added a lot of fencing and uh, donkeys. I consider donkeys an upgrade. Um, and, of course, a lot of other upgrades to the home. But anything that they've done to the home since they purchased it, which is also good to know from the standpoint of um, a home appraisal. Sometimes an appraisal will say, oh, well, this home just sold two years ago for 100000 and now you're asking 200000 What did you do to it? And it's, it's nice, actually, to have answers to those questions. Uh, plus, it helps you, again, with your marketing materials. And that's also what this is for. Write a bit about what you loved about the house. Um, I loved the donkeys. Of course, they weren't here when we bought it. But, uh, yeah. So th this is another place where you're, you're going to gather information for your, your marketing. 
And then we give a nice generic, is there anything else we need to know box? So that uh, basically is, is what they're going to fill out for us. And then when they're done, they're going to hit that submit button. And you get a message, great, thanks for filling out my form. So that's what's happening from the seller's point of view. From your point of view, um, as an agent, if you know that a client has filled out a listing questionnaire, either because they told you that they did or because we received an email, I believe that the email notifications at this point are set to go to Deb's email. So if she gets one from one of your clients, she'll let you know that there's a questionnaire. The entire thing will come in an email, so you don't necessarily need to log on to the WooFu website, but I'm going to show you how to get there and find your, uh, your listing questionnaire if you need it. So you go to WooFu.com, www.WooFu.com. You'll use my login. At this point, our, our account only allows for one user, but that's fine. I will share my login. So it's just my email address, which again is over here, so feel free to jot that down. My password for this is mustard1. I'm a big fan of condiments. So I'm going to log in and you'll see that we actually have a handful of different different forms. The one that we're concerned with at this point, not the buyer questionnaire, not the commission request form, not the listing services, it is the listing questionnaire. So to, to get to the entries, just scroll over here where it says entries, open it up and then scroll to the entry that you're looking for which in this case there it is right on top obviously because I just filled it out so you just click in there you go and then there is all that information available right here in this form and you are able to email that to yourself if you want to you know, I can just email it to myself so I can show you what that's going to look like you can print it from here so it'll put it in a, a nice printable format and that's actually pretty cool um, you could delete it if you want to, which ultimately I'm going to delete this because we're not going to use it. Or if you wanted to, um, in the case where you have a client who's not really very tech savvy, they don't want to get on the computer and do a, uh, you know, fill anything out on the internet, you can call them up, you can have them in the office, and you can, you know, just hit new questionnaire and just fill it out for them as they, as they tell you the answers. So that's just another way to do it. And I am going to go into my email just to show you what they look like when you uh, receive them via email. Um, actually, I'm not going to do that. Just take my word for it that they look a lot like uh, what that printed version of it looked like. So, all right, um, onward in the next video, I will show you um, what to do with this and what other information we're going to gather preparatory to actually doing the contract.